all right y'all so we have the nba season coming back in a little bit over a week so i figured now would be a great time to go over my season predictions for the seeding one through ten in each conference uh, you know just getting my thoughts out there getting my you know actual predictions out there set in stone so i can go back at the end of the season and see how it did obviously i'm not going to be you know this is a no injuries i can't predict injuries i assume covid will have some sort of say in these final standings but with that being said we're starting with the eastern conference in this video so let's just get into it starting at the one seed i am gonna go with the reigning champion milwaukee bucks and i don't really mean that in a finals uh you know stance or just a eastern conference stance but i think milwaukee will be repeating as the one seed They've had a whole tune-up and just change in roster, a lot of overturn. They gave up a lot of draft picks in that one trade for Drew Holiday. They almost had Bogdan Bogdanovich but didn't get him. And other than that, they revamped the bench with guys like Bobby Portis and DJ Augustine. Even uh, Bryn Forbes is added to the roster. Again, it's going to be a new look Bucks team. I think they're going to still be a defensive monster house, and they're going to. They have Giannis at the end of the day. They have Giannis, two-time MVP, back-to-back -back MVP champion. So they're going to be just fine the regular season. Obviously, assuming no injuries. Moving on to the second seed, I have my hometown Boston Celtics. Uh, while they did lose a few pieces in the names of you know Gordon Hayward, that was really the main piece and the only piece that they lost. But um, you know they brought in Tristan Thompson. They brought in Jeff Teague, and I think overall, they're going to be fine the regular season. They still have Tatum, Brown, Smart. Kemba's going to be missing at the start of the season, but that won't matter. This is a young Celtics team who's going to go out there and win games because they still have something to prove. Come playoff time, that might be a different story, but I think they're definitely going to win plenty of games in the regular season in an effort to prove themselves to the league. I think they get into that second seed. Now, close behind the Celtics at the three seed, I have the Brooklyn Nets. And the reasoning why I have them at the three seed and not the two seed is simply because I think that both Kyrie and KD, the great players that they are, they're going to need some rest days throughout the season, especially one season removed from big injuries where, you know, Kyrie's dealt with injuries his entire career, but KD's coming off the Achilles injury. He's not going to be able to go out and play all 72 games. Because of that, Nets are probably going to drop a few when they have, you know, some less talented rotations and just teams in general that go out a certain night so for that reason i would have had them in the two seed had they all been healthy and were supposed to be healthy for the whole way through but because of the fact that they're going to be resting they're going to, they have some nagging injuries i have them in the three seed now at the four seed i have the reigning eastern conference champion miami heat uh one big loss in my opinion for them was jay crowder he was just an excellent starting wing to have on their team could play both the three and the four and gave them some toughness at a position and a lineup where they needed some toughness you know when they start guys like uh, Duncan Robinson or they have Tyler Harrow first off the bench you know you need someone who could come in and provide some strength body up on defense someone that could just you know send a message and Jay Crowder was that perfect guy for them now they did bring in the guys like Avery Bradley who will help them win but overall we have to remember this team they didn't win a whole lot of games last season they were the fifth seed going into the playoffs and they're just such a good playoff team that I don't think it's going to really matter how they do in the regular season. And because of that, they also just don't really necessarily have a superstar yet. They do have Jimmy Butler. They have Bam Adebayo. I'm not saying they're not a talented team. But again, they're just, I have a feeling that they're going to do more of the same that they did last year. Where they win a lot of good games, maybe lose some games that they shouldn't. And just with the talent that is ahead of them and the teams I've already named, I think the Heat will probably come in at that four spot. Now, as we go into the fifth seed, this is where I have a difference in tiers. Those first four teams that I mentioned, I see them as kind of a top tier in the Eastern Conference. So now we're moving into a lower tier. And at this fifth seed, I have the Philadelphia 76ers. I've actually very much enjoyed what the Sixers have done this offseason. They bring in Doc Rivers, who I didn't necessarily think was the best candidate, but he is a good coach. And they brought in Daryl Morey to be the leader in the front office, which I've loved so far. And then they also just made some great moves like getting off of the Al Horford contract. They brought in plenty of shooters to surround Ben Simmons with and Seth Curry and Danny Green. They, they still have some work to do. They still have some hideous contracts like Tobias Harris's. But in the end, I think this is a Sixers team that's finally moving in the right direction. If they do want to stick true to their words about building around Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, does that mean it's going to work right away? 
I'm not too sure. Again, I'm a, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Doc River signing. I just, I don't know if he still has it. And also just because of the fact that the Sixers team might need a little bit of time to gel together and find their role. I think they're going to be a very strong team by the end of the year, as long as obviously no injuries or any disruptions happen. But I, ultimately, I just see them still having some issues that hold them back to that fifth seed. Then at the sixth seed, we have the second and final team in the second tier in the uh, Eastern Conference that I like to have, and that is the Toronto Raptors. And I know some people watching this might be, or have, might have been saying to themselves, you know, where are the Raptors at? Where are they? They're a good team, but just, you know, they lost Marcus Gasol, they lost Serge Ibaka, they get back Fred Van Vliet, which was big for them, but I think just losing a lot of that interior defense might have a bigger impact on their team defense than we you know that someone might just initially think by just you know briefly looking through their roster additions and subtractions this off season. Not to mention that they're gonna be playing in Tampa Bay for the entirety of the season, so I feel like that could just be a weird wrench that's thrown into there. Maybe it has an impact, maybe it doesn't, but either way, I could definitely see this Raptors team just kind of taking a little bit of a gap year. We all know they're aiming for Giannis Antetokounmpo in next season's free agency. Even if they don't get him, they're going to have the money to go out and spend on other free agents. So again, I think they might just take this year as a development year. You know, whatever happens, happens. If they get a high seed, they they get a high seed. And if they get a low seed, it's okay. They get a low seed. Nothing's going to change for them and their future plans. Now we move into tier three of the Eastern Conference and at the seventh seed, uh, they were a recent move up for me due to a recent trade, but I have the Washington Wizards. I've been really high on them this entire offseason, even before the addition of Russell Westbrook. I've loved their young team. I love the fact that they're going to get John Wall back together with Bradley Beal, but now they have Russell Westbrook instead of John Wall. That's just an upgrade in my eyes, so it's a better point guard to pair with someone who should have been an all-star and maybe even an all-NBA player last season in Bradley Beal. Pair that with their young core of Thomas Bryant, Rui Hachimura, uh, Troy Brown off the bench. They have, um, well, I'm blanking, Isaac Bonga, a few other guys on that team who I think have some serious development um, probabilities. <laughs> That's a really weird way to word that. But guys who I think have good amount of potential on that Wizards roster now have some real superstars to even help them get some playoff experience. Obviously, they're not quite on the tier of the six other teams I've named in front of them. They're not quite contenders yet either. I don't know if they'll ever be contenders with Russell Westbrook on their team, but they are going to be that sort of, you know, back half of the playoffs. They're going to sneak in, might give a team some surprises, and they're definitely going to have some good games along the season. So, you know, be on the lookout for the Wizards. They're going to have a fun offense to watch, and overall, they might just be a fun team to watch. Then coming at the 8th seed, I have another team who was notorious for their offseason moves in these past couple of weeks and months, and that is the Atlanta Hawks. Right off the bat, they have Trey Young and John Collins and Kevin Herter and Cam Reddish all returning to the team. Then you throw in those additions of Danilo Gallinari, Chris Dunn, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Clint Capella, and their uh, Anyeka Okungu, who they just drafted, and that is looking like one of the <laughs> scarier teams for the future in a few years down the line and they have the veterans that they can definitely go out and be a win now team that's what they said they wanted to do they uh, they've been saying it forever now that they want to make the playoffs this season it's honestly looking like it might be a boomer bust type year for the head coach and a lot of the guys in the front office so i think they will succeed hopefully they do for their sake just having trey young i mean trey young averaged near 30 and you know like 11 last year so He's an amazing player. Obviously, he has the defensive issues. I think the Hawks know that, and they went out and got Chris Dunn and Rajon Rondo for a reason. There's plenty of talent around them that they should comfortably make it into the playoff. I shouldn't say comfortably because I haven't got the eighth seed, but they should comfortably have a home court advantage in those playing games that are now going to be happening at the end of the season. Now, at the ninth seed, I have the Indiana Pacers, and... They're, I, they're just a solid team. We saw them be the four seed last season, and I'm kind of assuming that Victor Oladipo is going to be on the move at some point, so that's why, that's part of the reason I have them lower than what people might actually, you know, have them on their predictions, so again, I, this Pacers seems fine. They have Brogdon, they have Sabonis, for now they have Miles Turner, for now they have Victor Oladipo. There's a lot of talent there. 
but they're also starting with a rookie head coach. Every, it seems like every other team in the Eastern Conference got better while they just kind of stayed the same. And for that reason, paired with the fact that I think Oladipo is going to be on the move, I have them ninth. And it's it's I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to slight them or anything. They're just they just simply haven't gotten better while other teams have. And then finally, in a new tier at the tenth spot. So this is officially the fourth tier in the Eastern Conference, but. Coming at the 10th spot, I think the Orlando Magic snagged that last spot once again into the playing games. I think the Magic losing DJ Augustine was actually a pretty big loss for them. He was one of the few point guards on the team who could run an offense and set up others to score. I don't think they're going to get quite the same playing style or abilities uh, as I just mentioned with guys like Markel Fultz and Michael Carter Williams. And I, I do think Markel Fultz will take a leap this season because he's finally getting a healthy offseason in order to develop a little bit. But overall, I think the DJ Augustine loss is going to sting a little bit more than people might assume. And I mean, the Magic, they're still going to have a good defense. They have Aaron Gordon. They still have Evan Fournier. They brought back James Ennis. They're going to be very solid defensively, and I think that's going to be enough to get them into that 10th seed. Who knows, maybe they surprise us. Maybe they ship house and get rid of Aaron Gordon, get rid of Nikola Vucevic and just go for a full rebuild. Like, you know, maybe I, I personally think they should do that, but I don't think they will. But, you know, who knows with the Magic. They're just, they're stuck in purgatory right now until they finally just do something a little sporadic. So, sadly, I have them at the 10th seed. I feel for the Magic fans, I really do. But that will be it for the 10 teams who reached the playoffs and the playing games. Uh, here is my final list, just you know, a little roundup so you guys can get one more look at it in total. And um, as always, you know, drop your comments down below on what you think about my list or some teams that were, you know, what spots do you have teams on on your predictions? Uh, I'd love to see it. And other than that, Leave a like if you enjoyed this video or enjoy this type of content, and as always, most importantly, thank you for watching.